I had region border from upwards from region of the forearm by circular line, which is past one finger above the base of the styloid process of the radial bone. Two minutes before I spoke about it. Now, I provided two lines, one by the medial margin, second by the lateral margin of my hand region, and I divided it into two surfaces. That is called the palmar surface. This is called the dorsal surface of the hand. We made divisions. Now, let's start to study the layers. Finish region, which we start to get. Anteriorly, palmar region, hand. Once again, skin is very rich to the receptors. That is the tactile sensitivity of the receptors, simple sensitivity of the receptors. Also here we have, of course, sweat and secretions in us. We have huge amount of the folds. By the way, folds of the skin forms here in the place of attachment to the connective tissue septors, which is originating from proper fish and which is come from the skin and fused with the skin. And by the way, this is the reason why the skin in your palmar surface is less movable than in your dorsal surface? Look, I can simply make any fold in my dorsal surface, but it cannot be so simply do it in the palmar surface because skin is not elastic. Skin is thicker than in the dorsal surface. Subcutaneous fatty tissues, great developed. We have specially this very good developed in the lateral and medial, in the place of your hypotenor and in the place of your tenor. In mid side, where you see depression, fatty tissue is not so great developed. Subcutaneous fatty tissue contains vessels and nerves. First of all, about vessels. This is the branches of cephalic and basilic veins. By the way, these branches located not in the palmar surface, but in the dorsal surface. Also here we have the skin nerves. Skin nerves here originated from two sources. Medially it is the ulnar nerve, right? The laterally it is the uh, medianus nerve. By the way, skin of the uh, uh, palmar surface on the level of the fifth finger and half of the fourth finger supplied by ulnaris. Skin on the level of the first, second, and third, and half of the fourth finger, that is supplied by nervous medianus. Only one exception, guys, lateral surface of uh, hand region, it is thumb lateral surface, it is supplied by nervous medianus. Remember about it, if you will look to this picture, you will see these three colors. Brown, it is the place of supply of hand by nervous medianus. Green one, it is place of innervation by ulnaris, and this pink red one, it is the radialis place of innervation. By the way, we can have variations, but the majority of the cases, this is the situation which I tell you now. Superficial fish generally doesn't have any specificities. Uh, proper fish, proper fish of the region is very thick in the middle part and thin in the lateral medial parts. In the middle part, it forms the special structure which we call palmar aponegros. Aponegros is palmaris. In this picture, you can see this white structure which is located in the middle portion. We call palmar aponegros. How it forms? It forms by junction of two structures. First of all, it is the propagation, and second, it is the tendon of palmaris longus muscle. They join to each other and they form triangular shaped structure with the base which is looked to the fingers and with the tip which is looked to the forearm. You can see that it contains two types of the fibers, longitudinal fibers and uh, transverse fibers. By the way, transverse fibers localized in two places, approximately in the level of the midpoint of your metacarpal bones and approximately in the uh, fold between metacarpal and digital regions. Last one we call the natatory ligament. Between these uh, horizontal and vertical fibers, you can see apertures. Look here, please. This is the apertures which is located here. And these apertures have great importance, guys. They make the communication between subcutaneous fatty tissue and between deep loose connective tissue, which is located just deep to the proper fish, under the proper fish. So these apertures we call commissural apertures. Commissural apertures. So, but the function of commissural aperture 
That is communication between subcutaneous part of the tissue and loose connective tissue, which is located under the proper tissue. By the way, on the place of location of these camisural apertures, we have the fatty pads, which is located in the level of our metacarpal digital fold, yeah, and P, which is three, yeah, on the place of location of the camisural apertures. This is place of the passage of the vessels and nerves from inside to outside. And for the place of formation of the digital neurovascular bundles. Let's make the small break, five minutes, because another students have the break to not work in the noisy conditions. And then we will continue. Okay? Before we go to the junction of two structures, yeah? this is the fortification and this is the end of the phosphorus polymer models. Let's continue. Now, second structure, important structure, which is formed by the propagation. Yeah, under the palmar process, you understand, yeah, we have the impulse connective tissue and we have the middle compartment, yeah, about which I will speak to you about. Now, um, uh, propagation forms the second important structure, except palmar process, which is called intermuscular septus. There are two intermuscular septus, it is the medial and lateral one. By the way, medial one fused with the lateral surface of fifth metacarpal bone, lateral one for fused with the third metacarpal bone, and they together divide it all uh, hand region, palmar surface of the hand, into three osteofacial compartments. From medial side, we have compartment of the tenor or medial osteofacial compartment. Middle one, we just call middle osteofacial compartment. And the lateral one we call compartment of the tenor. That's a hypotenor, tenor, and the middle compartment, which is the in the hypotenor we have the short muscles of the fifth finger, in the tenor we have short muscles of the first finger, in the middle compartment we have interosseum, which is anterior and posterior, and lubricated muscles. They are located inside of the middle compartment. Uh, before start to speak about muscles, we will we'll speak about that. By the way, four muscles we have in the tenor, four muscles in tenor, four muscles we have in hypotenor, and as I say before, in middle compartment we have two types of interosseal muscles and the lubricalis muscles, borishing from the muscles. About third structure, important structure, which is called the propagation, by the way, you can see it here also, this structure. Much more better it is visible here. We call it the. Come on. I will come. Please. You, you can go. No Last third structure, which is formed by the competition, we call the Renial Complexor. This is the ligament which is located in the carpal portion of the hand and which is fused with the carpal bones. And together with the carpal bones, it forms the carpal tunnel or carpal canal, which has important meaning because of its important content. Mohamed, can you, or maybe you, friend, can you remind me the carpal bones? Please, how many carpal bones do you have? I do my best. As I remember, please, two rows. Proximal one, distal one. Let's start from proximal. Scaphoid or navicular one, proviculum one, glutamine one, glutamine one, and PC4, which is the sesamoid bone. It's located inside of the tendon. A distal row, again, we come from the lateral side to medial trapezium, trapezoidal, capitatum, and hamatum. Why I name these bones? Because if you don't know the bones, you will not understand how the canal is formed. Now look here, please. My two fingers, which I show for you, will be the retinaculum flexorum. From the lateral side, they touch to two bones. One from proximal, second from distal. From proximal, it is your scaphoid bone. From distal, it is trapezium. In the medial side, seemingly two bones will be touched to this retinaculum flexorum in the pr proximal row. Look here, please. It is PC4. In the distal row, it is the hamad. Hamulus of os hamad. That's why now what will be formed? From one side, from deep, we have the bones. From another side, from superficial, we have the ligament. And between that, by the way, 
This retinaculum flexorum has two layers, superficial one and deep one. It's a discovered not only bones from above, but it discovered the surface of the bones also. And it forms the complete canal, which we call canalis carpalis. For example, in this picture, very beautifully, you can see these canals. Look, this is canalis carpalis. Much more better it is visible here, canalis carpalis. You can see the bones, and you can see the ligament, which is covering these bones. By the way, that is not the single canal, which is called the retinaculum flexor. It also gives the septa to the side of the navicularis and septa to the sides of the scapulae vein. And it forms two lunatic canals, canalis carpi ulnaris and canalis carpi radialis. We come to the conclusion that the retinaculum flexorum finally forms not one, but it forms three canals. The biggest one, middle one, it is carpalis, canalis carpalis, medial between canalis carpi urinaris, lateral between it is canalis carpi radialis. Now cut down. One minute attention into the picture. Inside of canalis carpalis, you can see two big synovial sheets. Medially, we have the common or ulnar synovial sheet. Laterally, we have the radial or first finger synovial sheet. What is located inside of it? Inside of common or ulnar synovial sheet, we have eight tendons, four superficial flexor tendons, and four deep flexor tendons. By the way, it's greatly visible that synovial sheet for second, third, four fingers. It is interrupted in the level of the midpoint of the metacarpal bones. Synovial sheet of the fifth finger, in this picture is not shown, but here you can see it very well. It is continuous up to the distal phalanx of the first finger, fifth finger. As I remember, once again I see you, from common synovial sheet, only to fifth finger synovial sheet continues without interruption. For second, third, and fourth fingers, synovial sheet is interrupted in the midside of the metacarpal bone. Then it is once again reoriginated in the level of the proximal phalanx. Inside of the radial synovial sheet, there are only one tendon. It is the long tendon of the flexor of the first finger, musculus flexor cordicis longus. And without interruption, this synovial sheet continues up to the distal phalanx of the second finger. Don't forget that your first, sorry, first finger has two phalanx, and all your fingers have the three phalanx. Proximal, middle, and distal. Here we have only proximal and distal. Why it is important to remember about this synovial sheet continuation? Because if you will have the inflammation of first or fifth fingers, it can be simply spread it into the two synovial sheets. And from the synovial sheets, it can come to the period of space proximal end of this uh, synovial sheets finish inside of the period of space which is located between third and fourth muscular layers of the forearm. Third layer it is flexor pigitorum profundus and flexor cordus is locus. Fourth layer it is pronata quadratus muscle. Between them we have the deep loose connective tissue of the forearm region. Except these two, by the way, 10% of the cases so ulnar and radial synovial sheets can be connected to each other in a U-shaped form. In that case, inflammation of one synovial sheet without interruption will be spread, uh, spread, uh, spread it into the opposite side. And we will have common inflammation. Again, I say you, such kind of communications, we have only 10% of human population. Tendons in the fingers have two Sheets. It is the fibrous sheet, which is located superficially, and synovial sheet, which is located inside. Fibrous sheet, as you remember from your anatomy, has two types of the ligaments. It is the cruciform ligaments. It, it, it is annular ligaments. Syno uh, synovial sheet contains two layers. From outside, we have the peritoneal. From inside, we have the epitoneal. And between that, in the place of the passage of peritoneal to the epitoneal, we have the mesotoneal. Mesotenum, it is place of attachment of the synovial sheet to the periosteum. And by the mesotenum, vessels and nerves from the periosteum pass to the synovial membrane and supply it. Between epitenum and peritenum, we have the synovial liquid, which is made lubrication and the slight movement of these two layers towards each other to decrease the friction.
Let's continue. Let's say once again look at this picture, greatly visible two synovial sheets. Yeah, red one it is the radial, blue one it is the ulnar. As you remember, superficial flexor tendons on the level of the proximal phala split it into two legs, deep flexor finger pass between them and reach to the distal phala and fuse with the distal one. That's why each of your fingers have not one, but have two flexors. It is superficial one and it is deep one. Exception, it is your first finger. First finger also have two, but short flexor located in the tenor region. It is doesn't locate it in the forearm region. Let's continue. Canalis carpi ulnaris, which is located in the level of the pit. Yeah, I forget to say that except two synovial sheets, it's not drawn in the picture. Inside of the canalis carpalis, we have the medium neurovascular vector, which is located just between ulnar and radial synovial sheets. And through this canal, it is cut to your palmar surface, and then it is involved in the innervation of the muscles. You remember mainly it is the tenor muscles, yeah, which is innervated, and one muscle from the hypotenor region. Also, it gives the branches to your skin, which I say you took three minutes before. I made the innovation of this. Canalis carpi urinaris in the level of the discipline will contain ulnar neurovascular vandal. That's an ulnar neurovascular vandal, vandal from ulnar groove, come to canalis carpi urinaris, and then again it is continuous inside. Canalis carpi radialis, it has the muscular tendon, it is musculus flexor carpi radialis, tendon of this muscle. Pass inside of canalis carpi radialis. This canalis carpi radialis doesn't have the vessels of nerves. It contains the tendon. Now let's continue. Let's come to the osteoclesial <coughs> compartments and let's discuss the structures inside of osteoclesial. As, as I say before, hypotenor has four muscles, tendon has four muscles, and inside of the middle compartment, we have two groups of the muscle. Interosal muscles, which is divided into anterior and posterior, and it is the lubricant muscle. Inside of the tenor, we have four muscles. It is short abductor, short flexor, opponent's muscle, and it is the adductor. One minute look here, please. Long abductor, as you remember, located in posterior core average. Short abductor, located in tenor. Ab, uh, short abductor, but also in tenor we have adductor. This is abductor. This is abductor. Again, I say you abductors is two. Long is located in posterior forearm region. Short is located in your tenor region. Adductor is only one, and it is located only in your tenor. Also in your tenor, except these muscles. We have short flexor and we have opponents. This is the opponents. Then you opposite your first finger. Only two fingers have these muscles, opponents. It is first and fifth. Because of this, you can make a fixation in your fist. So remember, body. About the hypotenor, it is short palmar, it is the short, it is the abductor muscle. It is the opponent's muscle and it is short flexor muscle of the feet finger. All of them located inside of the hypotenor. What is located in middle compartment? I say it two minutes before. Anterior, posterior, intercostal, and lubricant muscles. Now, last question about palmar surface. It is the deep loose connective tissue which is located under the palmar aponegros. You know it is divided by interosal muscles into two portions, superficial and deep. Superficial located between palmar aponegros and anterior interosal. Deep is located between anterior and posterior interosal. In superficial and in deep compartments, there are arterial arches. Superficial one contains superficial arterial arch. Deep one contains deep arterial arch. By the way, deep arterial arch is more protective because it is located between the muscles and pressure is not so high. How superficial arches form? You can see it by the green color. The main artery which is involved in creation of superficial arch it is arterial ulnaris. Second branch which is connected it is the palmar branch of arterial radialis. As you remember, arterial radialis in lower third of the forearm come to anatomical snuff box. By the way, anatomical snuff box mainly bordered by two groups of the tendons. Look here, please. In the lateral side here, you have two tendons. It is the long abductor tendon 
and short extensor tendon. In the medial side, you have long extensor tendon. That's a short extensor of first finger, of course, together with long abductor, forms the lateral side, and long extensor forms the medial side. By the way, in the floor, we will have two extensor cartilagialis tendons, extensor cartilagialis longus and brevis. And apex of this uh, fossa, which we call scaphoid, uh, which we call the anatomical snap fossa, it will be tip of the uh, styloid process of the radial bone. Let's say your arterial radialis first will enter inside of uh, uh, anatomical snap box, then between the first and second fingers, it is come to your um, palmar surface. And it is mainly forms the deep arterial ring, but it also gives the superficial branch, which is connected with ulnar artery, and together they form the superficial arterial arch. Superficial arterial arch, we, uh, we project it from midpoint of the line, which is connected all spiciformis with your second interfinger space. You divide it into two equal parts, and from the midpoint, you provide it the arch, arpeat shaped line. And it is projected your superficial arch. By the way, arch is open to up and to close to down. From superficial arch, the common digital arteries is originated, four common digital arteries. Each one is divided into two proper. Let's say they supply all interfinger species except the lateral the medial surface of the fifth and except the lateral surface of the first. Medial surface of the fifth exactly supplied by ulnar artery, lateral surface of the fifth first exactly supplied by the radial. All and others, let's say you can see that in the palmar surface, each finger will have two arteries, one in the medial side, second in the lateral side. It is, again, proper digital arteries. Now let's come to the deep arterial arch. As I say, it is located deeper between interosseal muscles. Main artery, which is involved in this formation, you can see it is arteria radialis. Also, it is connected with deep branch of arteria ulnaris. Let's say if superficial arterial arch mainly forms by ulnar artery, deep arterial arch mainly forms by the radial artery. From deep arterial arch, the metacarpal common arteries is originated. What is the function? They doesn't make any separate supply of anything. They form anastomosis with common digital arteries. Let's say then you press something in your head, usually superficial arch is pressed, but deep one, no. That's why your fingers doesn't lose the supply. You can see my fingers even change the color, but they doesn't necrotizate it. Because deep arterial arch, which is not so much pressed, provided enough blood to the common digital arteries, which by proper digital arteries, then supply the fingers. By the way, uh, deep structures also innervate it approximately simply, I mean, the fingers, as your skin. That's a tree and hell uh, nerves. It is proper digital nerves, originated from medianus, one and hell, proper digital nerves, originated from ulnaris. And together with proper digital arteries, they form the neurovascular bundles for your fingers. Let's say palmar surface, each finger has two neurovascular bundles, one in the medial side, second in the lateral side. About dorsal hand. Uh, dorsal hand, guys, has much more movable and elastic skin. It is one of the most elastic and movable skins of the human body. Subcutaneous fatty tissue is very loose. No any septus with your of it. That's why this is place of origination of the abdominal swelling. Leafy and simply accumulated here because no any separation. Inside of subcutaneous fatty tissue, I don't draw it here, but you can find simply in the, for example, the internet, there are the venous network. Venous network, which is formed by the main trunks of the basilic and cephalic, the originated basilic and cephalic, which is passed after to the forearm and finally goes to the outer compartments yeah, of the outer system. By the way, cephalic one, as you remember, reached the thorax region. It is entered inside of sulcus vertebra pectoralis, and then in the tip of this group in monorail fossa, it is perforated to superficial properties and drained into venous axillary. Basilic one, no. 
Assuming one is finishing the border between middle or lower third of the artery, remember about it. Now, superficial tissue, yeah, also inside of the skin, inside of fatty tissue, we have the superficial nerves. Superficial nerves here from three origins. It is the dorsal branch of the nervus ulnaris, dorsal branch of the medianus, and it is two branches of nervus radialis, superficial and deep. Both is come from the dorsal region. And as you can see here, there are specific type of the innervation, three and held, medial side, it is by ulnaris, three and held, the lateral side, it is the radialis, except the tips of the second and third fingers, and help of the uh, fourth finger, which is innervated by medialis. That is mainly the level of the uh, middle phalanx and the distal phalanx. Proper tissue here also made the uh, uh, ligament which we call retinaculum extensorum, extensors retinaculum. And this retinaculum extensorum gives the septus to the carpal bones, and it is divided here, the deep region, into six canals. Inside of these canals, we have the tendons of extensor and abductor muscles. Look here, please. From the laterally to the medially, canal number one, it is tendons of abductor longus and extensor uh, pollicis brevis. Second canal, you can see two tendons. It is extensor carpal radialis longus, extensor carpal radialis brevis. Third canal, extensor pollicis longus one. Fourth one, extensor digitorum. Remember, please, it is the biggest tendon. Look, extensor digitorum, fourth one. And also extensor digiti indici. Fifth one, it is extensor digiti minimi. Extensor, which is come to your fifth finger. And sixth one, it is the extensor cartilaginous. So remember, please, inside of this sixth canal, we have the muscles, tendons of the muscles of posterior forearm region. Again, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, extensor pollicis longus, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti indici, fourth one, fifth one, extensor digiti minimi, and sixth one, extensor cartilaginous. That is all information which will be involved in your controls, which I need to explain for you. Again, I tell you, I don't have anything so your midterm exam will be included the thorax region and the region of upper extremity, which I explained just now for you. Friday also will be important for you because we will draw together the cross sections. Away, I don't want to give it, but otherwise, what I will read you in the lecture. Another group didn't listen. That's it. For another group, I must do it. Yeah, that's it. For you also, it will be logical to listen these topics in your lecture time. Questions? Yeah, we finish our work, guys, because that is very simple. If I work alone, not together with you, I like my work. That's I, yeah, you, you want to sleep now. I will give you a chance. You will go now to sleep. What it means, no. Do you have questions? Technically, nothing more. We have a lot of time. You finish your lesson in 3... 3.30. 3.30. Well, there are one hour. I don't think that it's very logical to uh, sit it here. Go here, no? Start to study. If no questions, you can go.